Last week I started doing teaching streams over on my Twitch via suggestions that people gave me on my Discord. If you want to suggest things, Speed Theory channel on my Discord, which you can get in the description. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of these, but uh, this is a clip from the first one that I ever did explaining a little bit about Beowulf Shield. And if you enjoyed it, man, maybe throw me like a like on the video or subscribe or something. I don't know. I mean, it helps me out a lot. Thanks. Enjoy. All right, so uh, first things first, we're going to start with Beowulf. So because of that, I am going to rebind some things. Now, you don't have to rebind stuff to play Beowulf. I just do because I like how it feels to play Beowulf with uh, with these bindings, and it helps you to be able to uh, load your casts while you're dashing around. Um, so I am going to be rebinding my cast to L1 to do this. So I can do... You'll see every time that I load a cast, L1 is going to be uh, pressed. Um, also, a, a thing that I'm going to be using today, I have Codex Mod installed, because sometimes I'm going to want to be able to demonstrate things, and I'm not going to want to have to reset until I find them, right? So, uh, if I need a particular Daedalus Hammer, I can grab it. All right, so I'm just going to grab a charge shot here. Then do that. Yep. So, what does Beowulf do? Beowulf loads the cast, loads your casts into your weapon. So, I press the button, I load the cast into the weapon, and when I charge to a location after a dragon rush, which is the uh, the uh, shield charge, land at a location and all of the casts burst out of the weapon at the location that you land. You aren't going to be able to have the casts land early. Like, say, if I hit Skelly before the end of the, the Dragon Rush, like, say that my Dragon Rush goes all the way past Skelly here, and I want the cast to fire on Skelly, that's not gonna happen. The casts will fire where I land, okay? So, that's an important aspect of this, is that you can go through enemies and you will always have the casts fire at the end of your Dragon Rush, all right? Other tools of Beowulf. Beowulf has a special. Don't use it. It sucks. It's okay. You can charge it. It's kind of slow. It does some damage. It's not amazing. Uh, people used to like Beowulf special a lot. I think that this is sometimes a niche tool for killing small enemies if you have charged flight, but I wouldn't play it. I wouldn't use it if, uh, generally. Um, of its main attacks, you have, its, uh, basic attack is just a repeatable slam like this. Honestly, you're probably never going to use this. If you can help it, don't, tr don't use this. There's occasionally sometimes where you just don't want to move to be able to start up a charge. Uh, this is, this is generally just not going to be something that's in your arsenal. The way that you start your charges is almost always going to be with a dash strike. Dash strikes have about the same area of effect, if not slightly larger, because of the uh, movement, the forward movement of your uh, main melee attack and deal, let's see, this deals 50 damage, this deals 50 damage, they deal the same amount of damage, plus they're faster. So because of that, you're going to want to start almost all of your Beowulf combos with uh, a dash strike. Since they do the same amount of damage. Um, the Beowulf dash strike actually does a pretty reasonable amount of damage. It has a base damage of, well, it's 50 after, uh, it's 50 with high confidence, so that means it's a base damage of, like, what? 40? Um, 40 base damage, which is pretty good. And that's actually going to be kind of important. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's a couple of different casts that you can use on Beowulf. The two main ones that people think about are going to be Poseidon cast and uh, Aphrodite cast. Why do we want these two? Well, uh, let me start with Aphrodite cast. Aphrodite cast has some distinct benefits. Let me actually get Aphrodite cast using my mods. Um, so Aphrodite cast, let's grab a, we'll say a... No, we'll start, we'll do common because it's what you're mostly going to see. We're going to grab Passion Flare, all right, and then kill Skelly. So we can see that Passion Flare has a base damage of 80. 
80 base damage. That's where we're going to be starting with uh, with our, our, you know, cast. Uh, very solid. Passion Flare actually has the second highest base damage, I think, of any cast uh, for Beowulf. I think only topped by, uh, by Dionysus. And Dionysus has problems, so we're not, we don't use that one. Um, we used to, but it was not, in, it was not consistent ever. Uh, Passion Flare has reasonably high base damage and a medium AoE. You can see with just a single pa common Passion Flare, I did 312 damage hitting Skelly. So you can do quite a lot of damage uh, with just even a common level one Passion Flare. And after a single palm, which we actually have a way of, of showing that, give me a second, uh, what was it? It was Others of Note, Eurydice, hit this button, level mode, Passion Flare level 2. Yeah, after just a single palm, you can see we're already at 128 damage, which is uh, an over 50% increase in damage. And with this, we've almost killed Skelly in one salvo, so very high damage. The issue with this is that it doesn't scale super well. Um, you can get, uh, once you get about five palms in the cast, you're not going to get too much more damage out of palms. And the best way to be able to increase the damage from this point is Mirage Shot. Mirage Shot, unfortunately, is a duo boon between two gods that are not Aphrodite. So if you're able to pick up uh, Poseidon, something like Tempest Flourish, uh, you do not want to pick up Tempest Strike. It will knock enemies away from your casts. That's bad. Um, and uh, Artemis, usually you'll want to pick up Deadly Strike. Already with this, you actually have a pretty solid amount of damage. Like with the crit, with the crit attack, you do reasonable amount of damage with your attack. You can do some pretty solid hits with just this build, but to really make it scale into the late game, you want to pick up Mirage Shot. Now, this is a thing that I've talked about here before. I'm going to be, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it again because there might be somebody who doesn't know. Mirage Shot is bugged on Beowulf. Mirage Shot's bugged. Mirage Shot says that it fires a secondary cast that deals 30% of the damage to the original. It doesn't. It fires a secondary cast that deals 100% of the damage of the original on Beowulf. So, which as soon as you pick this up. Why is Poseidon attack worse than Dash? In my uh, mode, they both inconveniently knock enemies away. Uh, Dash is also shitty. Um, you generally only want Poseidon on your special. For Dash, what you can do to mitigate the, the problems with Poseidon Dash, you can do something like... Let me grab Tidal Dash. To mitigate the problems with Poseidon with Tidal Dash, you can do like... And then wait to dash again. And uh, Tidal Dash, as Duncan Dio says, can uh, be boosted by having Charge Shot. Because in Charge Shot... Let me go to... Uh, Artifacts, Daedalus Hammer, Charge Shot. With Charge Shot, what you can do is you can hit an enemy, and even if you knock them away, you can still hit them with the attack without having any problems, right? But if you don't have Charge Shot, uh, Tidal Dash it requires you to play very specifically around your Tidal Dash. What dash do you want on Bayo? None of the dashes on Bayo actually matter. You're not going to be able to get a reasonable amount of damage out of your dash. Um, you can pick up something like Thunder Dash or something like that if you already have Mirage Shot. It really doesn't matter. Your dash is not going to be important. It's refreshed. So the other, uh, the other cast that we can go for that requires you to find fewer gods, it's generally going to be more consistent but does have a, some problems, is Poseidon Cast, uh, Flood Flare. The thing about Flood Flare is you may notice that its base damage is only 60, right? It's like, okay, it's 20 less than than uh, Passion Flare. That's not great yet, right? So Flood Flare has uh, only 60 base damage, but you might notice that its AoE is much larger than Passion Flare. It's probably about 40, 50% larger or something like that. Um, so while it doesn't have as much base damage, it is huge and doesn't knock enemies back as much as you would expect. If you hit with one, you're going to reliably hit with more than that. But the thing 
about it is that it is much easier to find Mirage Shot, and since Mirage Shot is such a huge damage increase, usually all you really need is like a Cast Stone out of Chaos or 1% damage boost to be able to make it equal the amount of damage of Passion Flare without having any of the, uh, without having any of the problems of Passion Flare, like a small AoE and not being able to find um, Mirage Shot sometimes, because it's two gods unrelated to the one you start with. Since Flood Flare is a prerequisite for Mirage Shot, you're basically halfway to it right out of the gate. So that's a bonus. I personally prefer the Flood Flare build. I think it's generally going to be more reliable, but um, you can experiment with both, play what you, play what you like the mirror. So now that we've talked about what kind of things we're going to be building on Beowulf, we're going to be basically going for a Mirage Shot and one of these two casts. Um, let's talk about the mirror real quick. Now, first things first, we definitely want Infernal Soul. Infernal Soul is going to be uh, super awesome because uh, Stygian Soul, the recharge is actually pretty long and our casts, we usually get our cast stones back immediately anyway, because wherever we land, the cast stones immediately pop back up. So we can just, just grab and keep going with our casts over and over and over again. We do have to be able to manage the casts appropriately, but that's just something you work on. Um, a lot of this is going to be standard speedrunning mirror, two dashes because you go fast, um, death defiance because you don't need stubborn defiance, chthonic vitality heals better, Boiling Blood, you actually, this is useless on Beowulf, you can never stick anything with a cast, but the other option is also useless, so who cares. Deep Pockets, uh, this is only good for farming runs, it's just, it's really inefficient. High, con high Confidence of Fire Presence we're going to get back to. Family Favorite uh, is generally played on almost all weapons, uh, per especially this build, you almost never get status effects, except for like, weak, right? So, uh, because of that, you just generally are never going to have privilege status. Um, Dark Foresight is almost exclusively better than Olympian's Favor. Having more boons is better than slightly better boons. God's Legacy, Mirage Shot is critical for making Beowulf work. Mirage Shot is absolutely critical for making Beowulf work. Rupture, eh. Not, not really enough. Uh, you also don't really ever want to be picking Rupture. Rupture and Marked, yeah, but like, uh, Marked will only apply to some things sometimes. And, you know, Rupture you is like a low tier pick. You don't want it. Um, anyway, Dark Foresight is good. God's Legacy, Mirage Shot is a must have on this build. The only way that you can deal with not having Mirage Shot on Beowulf is if you're able to pick up, like, three bonus casts and bonus cast damage out of Chaos. Like, it's really hard to survive without Mirage Shot. And, um, God's Legacy is going to increase your chance of getting Mirage Shot. God's Pride could get you, like, better Chaos and better, and, like, a better cast, but the problem is... Your cast rarity doesn't really matter in the face of the damage that you get from Mirage Shot, and uh, Chaos is notoriously unreliable, so God's Legacy is going to be better. Fate of Persuasion, we always take this. Uh, Fate of Persuasion doesn't cost time, because it pauses the time. you're in a paused timer state when you're using it, uh, unlike Fated Authority, and also it's just more reliable. So, um, so the two choices, these are, these are choices that are very specific optimizations on Beowulf that uh, I'm going to tell you about because you probably, like a lot of these things you might be able to intuit with some play. This you might not be able to intuit. Fiery Presence is really nice on Beowulf because a lot of times you're going to be opening your combos with a dash strike or a shield rush and both of those do pretty high damage and fiery presence will do a nice smack at the beginning before hitting them with all the casts there is also a second benefit of this that comes along with high confidence high confidence is weirdly good on beowulf because of a very specific thing in tartarus if you have high confidence and fiery presence together you do enough damage to one-shot witches in Tartarus with your dash attack. 
if you only have fiery presence, you miss da the damage by just a little bit. If you only have high confidence, you miss you miss it by a lot. And even if you backstab, you're still going to miss it. So you need to have fiery presence and high confidence on Beowulf to be able to really help kill things in Tartarus. But if you don't care about speed, it doesn't actually matter that much because like if you don't care about being able to efficiently kill witches which is good for speed then whatever right pick faded persuasion for speed doesn't mean the faded authority is reasonable and casual players persuasion still better persuasion is so much more reliable okay so fire presence high confidence the two of these things together if you take them you one shot witches with your dash attack you do 80 damage with that which is great um so that's how we set up our mirror to do this right now, I'm going to start, I'm going to do a Flood Flare Beowulf run, and I'm going to try and explain things through. Um, just, uh, if I go too fast with something, if I'm going to be, if I'm, like, rushing or something by accident, just feel free to, like, let me know, because I know I can sometimes go a little quick, and I want to be able to make sure that it is, that it is understandable. Now, where is my water bottle? Oh, there it is. It's right behind me. Great. Let's do this. Parched. Okay. So, again, watch my controller camera, and I'm going to try and explain the types of things that I'm trying to do. We're going to start... Uh, do I want to, I'm going to turn on tight deadline. I don't want to deal with survival rooms. Well, I guess if I'm doing this from an IGT player perspective, I'll do it exactly with an IGT mirror setup. Um, not that these runs are valid in any way, shape, or form, but whatever. Okay. Let's uh, let's do it. Which is just sad and annoying. Yeah. From your local bow player, from your local anything player, which is suck. I'm a sword player. I fucking hate witches. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm gonna do a cute trick here. It's probably incorrect, but I'm still gonna do it. So <laughs> these are awful hammers. Uh, these are really funny hammers. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take charge flight, but none of these matter. Uh, I will not use it. It's a, it'll be telling, it'll be teaching you bad habits to use charge flight. Okay. So the thing that I did there is that if you do a dash attack on your second dash slightly late into the dash, or maybe at the beginning, I actually can't really tell. Uh, I just do it. You actually extend your second dash. Um, the dash strike will actually make your second dash go further. So, um, so here's two dashes. Here's two dashes with a dash strike. Okay. So enemy comes at me. I'm going to do a dash strike, then do a dragon rush after loading all of my casts Welcome and hit. To the Bob oh, thanks for the three gift subs, Baba. Thank you so much. All right. So. The basic combo that I did there is I went here, I loaded my casts. You can load your casts while you're charging. You can actually load your casts up until the end of the attack. You can actually load it in uh, in flight. So you can see that I have no casts loaded in my weapon. I'm in flight, and I loaded a cast, All right? So I'm going to be loading my casts a lot of times, like as I'm dash striking around and stuff. That's going to be a, a major part of how I how I make this flow smoothly. Um, so here we go. So I'm seeing some witches. You can see that because I have the high confidence plus uh, plus fiery presence, I just was able to one shot both of those witches with my dash strike. So another one's going to spawn here. 80 damage that kills it straight up. I missed a target there and. Once I missed that target, oops, accidentally took 11 damage there because I was talking about something. Uh, once I missed that target, what I did is I was like, okay, I missed the target, but I'm already able to start this animation, and it'll be faster to go through this animation than it will be to do another dash strike. So I started the animation, and then I charged, and then the charge killed the target. So being able to recognize that you have, you know, missed and that you want to... Uh, uh, and that you have options after you miss is important for this kind of thing. 
Have you remapped your cast? Yes, I have remapped my cast to L1. But I used to play with cast on Circle and uh, on PlayStation, and I, I, that was still fine. Okay, that was a bit that was a bit shaky. I was thinking about something else. Okay, so that was pretty normal. What I did there is I set up while the thing was spawning a dash strike to get into a position and then pre-charged my attack and then let go of the charge right as the enemy spawned, right? So I do something like this. So um, in that situation, I charged through, then dash strike back in the opposite direction, and then dash strike to kill the enemy. A lot of times you're going to be doing a bunch of cast dash, or, uh, dash strike through things back and forth uh, and interspersing charges. Okay, here's our cast. We're going to want to pick that up. How does the cast load operate with external cast like beams and blades? Uh, so there are no beams on... Uh, oh wait, are there? No, icy flare is what gets uh, is how that works on uh, uh, on Beowulf. Is that uh, there isn't a beam cast on Beowulf? There is only icy flare, and icy flare is uh, shit. I mean, it's really bad. But um, for blades, for like uh, the the blade cast on Beowulf. It loads into your weapon, and then where you impact, a blade, a blade rift comes out, right? So that's how that's how that works. But also, don't use that. Slicing flare is really terrible. It's it's really bad. Don't play with it. Okay, so we have numb skulls here. The nice thing about numb skulls is that they die real easy. Icy flare is a sub seven. Doesn't mean it's good. Uh, Chiron has a sub seven. Chiron's dog shit. Okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> Now that I've now that I've shit on Chiron, um, the uh, small enemies generally what you want to be doing is dash striking. So I see a grouping of enemies here. I dash striked. I saw a grouping of enemies, and what I did is I loaded a cast, not really for the cast itself, but because when I load the cast, my dragon rush actually gets bigger, right? So I was able to scoop up all four of those numbskulls in one rush, right? So. Also, your cat, your rush does more damage after you load in a cast. So sometimes the, the, the rush is all you need to be able to kill things. Also, this sucks. Please don't bury me on my first run. There we go. Okay, I got Flood Flare. Nice. So here we can see that we've got a couple of different options. Keys are rerolls. We do like rerolls. Uh, darkness is worthless. Don't pick it. But we're gonna take chaos because chaos has absolutely massive, massive implications for any cast build. You can get bonus casts and cast damage out of chaos. It's fantastic. Also, when you're speed running, chaos is like. Uh, going to be a, a it pauses the timer so like chaos is a fast room um, though sometimes it's correct to not take it in RTA but depends so we're going to just take chaos here one of the downsides of chaos is that it turns off uh, chaos does, does pause the timer because well yeah chaos doesn't pause the timer but it does it's a fast room with no combat so it's very fast it's a free room um one of the downsides of taking Chaos early is it does turn off high confidence, which means you won't be one-shotting witches anymore, but usually the Chaos Boon is worth it. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, never take more foes. Don't do it. This early, I don't like taking minus gold, because uh, minus gold means that I'm not going to have enough gold for the mid-shop, almost certainly, and mid-shop can be very potent. Maimed Soul also sucks because attack damage, uh, that sucks. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll this once. Let's see what else. Hey, you know what? Okay, I'll take, I'll take minus gold for a plus one cast. Plus one cast is really, is really solid. This is worth taking minus gold. I wish that it was a different thing, like trap damage would be be would be better, but this is, this is solid. Oops, okay, well. This is an awkward room. Okay, so we're gonna load up the casts. Hit with two casts there. 
And that was just sort of standard rinse and repeat, right? Which is attack, load casts, attack, load cast, attack, load cast, etc. Rinse and repeat. And you notice I sometimes leave my casts behind. That's okay. Oh, shit. See, that's one of the weaknesses of Flood Flare, is that Flood Flare doesn't have great base damage. So even though I megged the enemy and hit him with three casts, they didn't quite die. So, imagine if Epic Plus Cast gave you two or three. That would be broken. Okay, so we're going to take, out of these three, uh, these suck. Blade Dash would open up duos we don't want, so I'm not going to take that. Battle Rage and Blood Frenzy are both generally useless, but Battle Rage is a little bit more utility, so we're going to take Battle Rage. Um, this is a free Nectar, so... Hey, free room. Love it. Shop. Not that we can really do anything with it. Oh, no. A gold thing where I'm not getting any gold. Very sad. Free palm. Yeah. So the nectar is a free palm, which is uh, real nice. Okay, so a lot of times in rooms like this, I'm going to target the largest enemy because the small enemies are all going to converge on my position while I'm trying to kill the largest enemy so if I can do if I can target down the largest enemy chances are the the other enemies are gonna die as collateral damage while I'm killing the largest enemy right this is a good philosophy for a lot of stuff targeting large groups of enemies or the biggest enemy in the room will often allow you to kill the smaller enemies to go along with it right also did I just get that money Oh yeah, my, my Chaos Curse ran out right as I got the, the money. Best cast for Beowulf. Uh, I actually went over that at the beginning of the stream, so if you want to check that out, I did go over a whole section about what the best cast for Beowulf are. Alright, so we've got these enemies. These ones, I'm going to try and group. Uh, so I'm not actually going to attack them immediately. I'm actually going to get them to do this. And now that they all went into a little clump there, by dodging their attacks, I was able to all kill them all in one swell foop. Right. Similarly, that was three enemies that I just went. Poof. Okay, enemies that run away generally suck. That was two enemies in the same spot. There we go. Swell foop. Yeah. So flood flare level two, where we don't really get great damage out of flood flare until we get it to around level four or five. So um, we're gonna get there pretty soon here. You can see that in that position, what I did is I dashed and targeted myself so that I would try and uh, clip the backwards, clip the nearest lout with the edge of my of my uh, cast, and then hit the full, uh, the, hit the furthest lout with the end of my attack. Swell foop is actually something I got from my dad. My dad that my dad made up swell foop. So get destroyed, Rodophorus. Um, so, uh, here I'm going to do this. You can see that I was trying to pass straight through and hit at the very end. Yep. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Now we have Flood Flare at level 4, so that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna grab... I have 260 gold, which means I could buy a, a god, but I'm not going to because Athena is not one of the gods we want. We only have two gods right now, and that's that's okay. I'm gonna buy this, pick up another palm and Flood Flare. Now we have a very solid number of palms and Flood Flare, and I'm not gonna be doing a crazy amount of damage, but we'll see. So on Meg, basically... My, my, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up by loading all four of my casts and just hitting Meg as hard as possible, right? Once the casts are falling, I'm going to just try and do dash strike, charge attack, dash strike, charge attack, dash strike, charge attack rapidly to try and get in damage while my casts are, are uh, irrecoverable, right? Shit. And I'm going to load in four casts. Got him. Right? So that's the idea. Bad damage, good god. And this is the, this is the, the like, pretty mediocre, honestly. One, plus one cast and a level five cast. 
It's not that it's not a particularly crazy build. Um, here I could buy a knight spindle to get another uh, another meg. It would be okay, but I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move on here. I I think that there's an argument for buying that knight spindle, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with it. Please try to forehead learning. I will try my best, Tresh. Okay, so a little thing about Hermes. Hermes has a couple of options that are okay on uh, Beowulf, but generally Hermes is just going to be mobility. You're not going to get too much unless you pick up hyper sprint plus rush delivery. You can't pick up bad news because bad news is restricted to having Stygian soul. With Infernal Soul, you could only pick up the Hermes legendary for Infernal Soul is not available unless you get unless you take the Hermes keepsake because it requires a prerequisite of either having quick reload or, or flurry cast, and you can't get either of those on Beowulf. They're ne neither of them are in the pool. So generally, the only thing that's actually super useful out of uh, Hermes is hyper sprint plus rush delivery, which is a pretty awesome combo if you get it. But uh, you're not going to really shoot for it. It's not something you're going to roll very hard for unless you already have Mirage Shot. Which sometimes you do. Sometimes you have Mirage Shot by the time you get your Hermes Boons, but it's not that common. Alright. Should have loaded a second cast there. There we go. So, something that I like to do... Okay, yeah, here, like, I'm not gonna roll this. I'm not gonna bother with this. I'm just gonna take, like, Side Hustle or something. It doesn't really matter. So, something that I do... I'm gonna... Uh, I, let me explain a little something about animation canceling. So animation canceling is a thing in uh, in Hades, the video game, where a lot of backswing animations can be canceled with like a dash. So does the edge of a cast do more damage than, or the initial hit? They do the same amount of damage. That's why you can hit with the edge and still do really good damage. Okay. So um, the... Uh, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so animation canceling, you can cancel the backswing animations of a lot of things. So, for example, you see how Zag does this thing when he uh, throws his shield? You can actually dash, and you don't have to do that, like, wind-down animation, right? So, at the end of my casts, if I load a cast, I usually dash strike out of it, because dash striking out of it allows me to reposition and cancels the cooldown animation of doing your, your charge. Right, so I immediately dash strike. I actually dash strike so fast that the casts are still moving, right? Uh, I'm gonna grab a palm. More palms move good. Master speedrunner. I think I'm allowed to have that title. <laughs> I I think I've earned the title of master speedrunner. So with these, I'm just trying to group the two enemies together by uh, getting them next to each other and then pushing them in similar directions while hitting them with casts. Where? Oh, enemy over here. Right. So let's go up to 160. Can I call you Master Splinter? If you want to, but honestly, I don't recommend it. Um... So here we have the, the, the Sophie's Choice. I hate this choice. This choice sucks. So here's Sophie's Choice. Sophie's Choice is um, <laughs> the uh, Shop versus Eurydice versus Chaos. All three of these have merit. Chaos is really good on cast weapons. Shop is, uh, gives you a chance of finding another... Um, Gives gives you a chance of finding another uh, Artemis, and Eurydice gives you some really nice bonuses and is a very fast, and it, it completely pauses timer. Um, I think there's a lot of merit to probably either uh, Shop or Eurydice here. Both of them are very solid. The reason why we might take Shop is I don't have a, an Artemis yet, so the chance of getting another Artemis is quite nice. But also, it's only a 1 in 8 chance of actually finding the Artemis. So I'm actually going to go for Eurydice here. This is, But this is a hard choice, right? Off of Eurydice, I'm probably... Probably the best option off of Eurydice here is I want to take Refreshing Nectar because Refreshing Nectar increases the chance of finding Duo Boons and we need a Duo Boon pretty quickly, so I'm going to grab that. 
The other two options, rarity doesn't matter very much in the cast, and we already have six palms. We don't need more. Boone, are you going for attack? I'm going for Artemis attack. I hope to get it right now. So um, I'm going to tell you how I kill these. There's a, there's a faster way to do this that's called the one cycle, but I don't know how to do it, and it's also inconsistent. Um, the uh, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load all of my casts. I'm going to stand on top of the Mega Gorgon. When the uh, Skull Crusher lands, I'm going to Meg, crack both of their armor, and then kill them both with the casts, with all casts at the same time. This is a thing that you can only really do reliably on cast weapons because they have crazy burst damage, right? So, yeah, yeah. This is it right here. Now, because I don't have great cast damage yet, it did take me two shots, but still. Deadly Flourish. The attack is actually really important, so I'm gonna roll this once. Yeah, there's Deadly Strike. Nice. Okay, so we have we have Deadly Strike now. So our build is almost online. The last thing that we need is Mirage Shot, and then our build is online. Okay, these two enemies are here next to each other. I should have loaded a second cast there. Okay, just trying to get as many, just trying to get as many double hits as possible. And you can see I actually get really big crit attacks, because the base damage on uh, Beowulf's, all Beowulf's attacks are actually really high. So the crit attack actually does quite a lot, even without having Mirage Shot. Like, it's just very solid for the time when you don't have Mirage. Like, see, that was a 457 damage shot. Ooh, I didn't explain why I took this. Uh, why not money? I already have 359 gold. If you think, each boon is only 150 gold out of a shop. So at this point, I can buy two boons and still have some money left over. So I'd rather take the Hermes to try and pick up, like, uh, like plus two dashes or something and get all of my Hermes boons out of the pool before I, you know. Does Floodshot also get a crit chance of just the initial attack? Just the initial attack. It's good enough even with that. Do you have any advice on the Mega Gorgon? Uh, hmm, I don't really. I actually don't have any really good advice here. Um, so I act I'm actually going to buy this Zeus. I wanted to speculate on getting maybe the prerequisites for... Uh, for Mirage Shot here, but we have, the reason why we're seeing this Zeus here is because we don't have a full God Pool. Um, for an explanation on the God Pool, briefly, once you have four gods, you can only see those four gods, and before you do, every boon has a one in eight chance of being any god, right? Uh, not including Hermes and Chaos. So this Zeus here is showing up because I only have three gods at the moment. So once I buy this Zeus, I will know that I have a 50% chance, because there's only four options, and it can be either Artemis, Poseidon, now Zeus, or Ares, I have a two uh, of my four options can give me Mirage Shot. So buying this Zeus increases my chance of finding Mirage Shot dramatically. So I'm going to buy this. Ooh, this sucks. So um, unfortunately, I was hoping that I got not a core boon, Picking up a core boon here reduces the chance of me finding um, Mirage Shot because it uh, adds Lightning Rod and um, it adds Lightning Rod and Sea Storm to my options. So not a big fan of picking up one of these, but I also really don't want to spend my last reroll here. So I am actually going to take Zeus Call. What aid do you want in this build? Uh, none really matter. Um, aid is gen aid and dash are generally useless uh, and special. Aid, dash, and special are all generally pretty useless, but Zeus Call is the best, I guess. Also, hi, Artsy and Queen Chi. Does Ravenous Will work with Beowulf? It does. So we're going to grab Zeus Call. This does open some annoying options, but whatever. I might try and sell it in the mid-biome. Not sure. It is still useful damage, but... 
Okay. So I'm standing over on this platform because from right here, uh, the two learning spawns, if there are learning spawns that don't fire waves, which they can't be in this fight because the main head is a wave maker head, will attack you and you can hit all of them. Uh, no, selling does not open the god pool. It keeps the god pool closed while also getting rid of the boon. So from right here, you can see I was able to hit both of the targets with the, uh, both of the heads with the, the cast. I'm going to use my call to try and get through this phase a little faster. Now I'm going to sit, stand right here for the exact same reason. We can actually get four! I got the four, I got the four learning, didn't quite finish off the last head, but I did get the four, the four learning head. I love the four learning head. The four head's real cool. Because Rev, when you proc, proc when you load the cast, or only when the casts are on the ground, when you load the casts. As long as you load all of the casts. Okay. So, um, here we don't have a great option for a keepsake to try and find our, our god. So what we can do is we can grab Bone Hourglass because in the well, we get, there it is. We have a lot of really good well options for cast builds. Prometheus Stone being one of the two really good ones. Um, Prometheus Stone's going to give us an extra cast for pretty much the for the entirety of Elysium now. 14 rooms is enough to go all the way through Elysium. So that's why we that's why we pick up Bone Hourglass in Elysium. It's very solid. Also, uh, there's cast damage that we can pick up. So we have five casts now. Um, yeah, Braid of Atlas. Braid of Atlas is the other one. Which is 20 gold for 50% cast damage. It's quite nuts. Alright. So, we have palms and gold here. Since I have side hustle, I actually don't really have to care about gold. So, I'm actually going to go for this palm. I'm going to try for fully loaded. I've only gotten one uh, Artemis boon in this whole run. No. I mean, I guess if it shows up. But, like, fully loaded never shows up. Ah, nuts. That was actually a mistake on my part. Um, swordsmen can sometimes run away from you in really dumb ways. Uh, they're one of my least favorite enemies. Um, unarmored swordsmen are generally thought to be one of the worst enemies that you can possibly see in Elysium. Because they can run away from you weirdly. So, and also they are worth very few points and a lot of them spawns. Spawn, best hammer upgrade for Beowulf, charge shot. Yeah. Which I'm going to hope to get here. Alright, more stupid swordsmen. Ah. Being a little... Not playing around the shield super well at the moment. There we go. And... Oh, nuts. Not playing around the geometry super well either at the moment. Alright, here we go. Okay, so there's a couple of decent options here. Minotaur Rush kind of sucks. You don't want to charge your, char your rush that long. Uh, Ferocious Guard is okay, but Breaching Rush can just, like, crush armor sometimes. Um, of course we're gonna take Patty. Patty's amazing. And here, I'm going to take, uh, Hydrolite Gold, because Hydrolite Gold can put me into high confidence range. Then I'm gonna go in here. For shop, come on. Zeus, please, Zeus, leave me alone. Alright, so now we have Artemis and Poseidon here. Artie and Poseidon are the two gods that we wanted to see, so that's great. Um, I'm just going to take Artemis. Nah, no butterfly ball. It's okay. So I'm going to hit this, and... There we go. See? If you're in high confidence already, do you take jerky? Yes. Sometimes. I actually tend to just like Hydrolite. Build online. Got it. So, now that we have this, we can just kind of crush through most everything. So playing around shield guys is sometimes a little funky. You want to try and dash behind them and then charge. 
or bull rush all the way through them, but that can be a bit weird sometimes. Right. Now I'm going to go for another palm here. Alright, where are the enemies? There we go. As you saw, I dashed around. Oop. Nice. This is the kind of damage that we can expect with Beowulf uh, online. Okay, more palms. Nice, Armored Witches. I honestly probably only need one cast to kill our Armored Witch if I hit him with the Bull Rush, but, you know. Nice. Another Palm. We have level 7 Flood Flare now. And in here. Oh my god, two curves. <laughs> I'm going to buy this. There's no reason to and no reason not to. I'm going to just take Blade Dash here now. Because here's the thing. Blade Dash doesn't mean anything because we uh, Mirage Shot is mutually exclusive with uh, Curse of Drowning. So we can't get Curse of Drowning to fuck us now that we have Bla now that we have a Mirage Shot. So, And I'll buy that Spare Palm. No reason not to. Okay. So, here we go. Theseus and the Minotaur. Theseus and the Minotaur. Is a T on the end? Yeah, period. Okay. So. I'm going to meg both of them. The way that I do that is right out, right after the dialogue ends. I'm going to press up on my D-pad for like one frame. <laughs> Very short period of time. Just enough for Zag to move forward, like just enough for them to hit cardinal direction up. Then I'm going to meg. It's going to hit both of them. After that, I'm going to dash toward Theseus and then try and bait Asterius to Theseus so I can kill them both at the same time. Sometimes I'm not the best at this. And also sometimes the, the AI doesn't like it and doesn't cooperate. You never know. But, as you can see... Right? If it works, it works. <laughs> know what I'm saying? And I can explain how that works, you know? Alright, let's see. Is there anything... Uh, honestly, none of the things that I could buy here really matter. Uh, well, I sh should say no boons that I can pick up really matter from this point. So I'm just going to roll and see if I can get ah, no no cast anything. So I'm going to pick up, I, I will buy the Ignited Icker. Chimera Jerky doesn't do anything. So I'm going to buy this, and then I'm going to try and find, I'm going to try and check wells for more cast damage things. Because okay, that's like really the only way that I can boost my damage from this point. Uh... Oh, yeah. It's a good day. All right. That is a... That, that's a... Um, that's a legendary fish, so... <laughs> okay. Here we go. In sticks, I'm going to be trying to do much of what I was doing before, which is trying to group enemies in the small rooms as quickly as much as I can, and then kill them all in one salvo, right? Like that, right? I grew, I tried to smash one uh, satyr up near the top, and then hit them, bo hit both the satyrs with all of my casts. Oh, hi, tiny vermin. I get to demonstrate what this looks like on Tiny Vroom. It's the best way to find a duo boon. Um, you need to know the prerequisites, and then once you have the prerequisites, uh, the the God's Legacy mirror option will help a lot. 
Also try and fill up all your Corboon slots, which, slots, which are the ones on the on the side of the screen. So attack, special, cast, dash, call. Fill those up because uh, those mess with your chances. All right, here we go. Hi, Tony. All right, Tony Merman. Oh, you piece of shit. I fucking hate Tony Merman, dude. Right. Why do you always enter boss tunnels first? A great question. Um, Welcome to the Bob Squad. Hey, thanks for the tier one, Killis Pro. The reason why you enter boss tunnels first is because mini bosses are much, 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 much faster than big rooms, and you can't find the sack until at least the second path. So because of that, if you enter the mini boss tunnels first, you uh, are able to clear out the two fastest, the two fastest encounters at the beginning where it's most likely that you uh, see the sack and then you try and only do the longer encounters when you're getting unlucky, right? Need to clear heat level bounties, get new bounties with higher heat level, yes. All right. For example, we may, you know, I think we're probably on like a three to four sack now. I mean, we're definitely on at least a three sack. Big rat. Oh, big rat, I hate you so much. Oh, big rat, you can suck a nut. All right, let's go and grab this. Is five sack a thing? Ah, oh, yes. Oh my God, yes, yes. It's the worst. Five sacks are the worst RNG you can get in the game, especially since they're very un unlikely. They're in the, like, the 2 to 4% range, depending on whose math you're talking about. We're not exactly sure the, the exact probability, but it's somewhere between 2 to 4% chance overall. Hey, there's a 3. Okay. Um, here, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick up Clouded Judgment, Static Discharge, either way it works. Doesn't matter. Clouded Judgment means I'll get to call more often, slightly. Um, and then here, I am actually going to buy one of these. Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Ah! Give me the other one! Man, fuck off. Uh, this is just me having fun at this point, because I have a lot of money. Uh, Alright. Level 4 Blade Rips, baby. Cool. Big rat or small rat, which is worse? Uh, small rat, but big rat is close. <laughs> so, Chad, what do you want to see Dunk do next? Queenchi, I already have a, I have a, I have a thing that I'm doing. I have a plan. Queenchi, 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 I'm doing Hera next. You're looking very stately there, father. All right. There we go. Oh, I should have megged. Whoops. I was so I was so distraught by the Queen Chi thing that I uh, forgot to meg. I still hit, I think, though. <laughs> Wasn't here when Strimmer said the plan. To be to be fair, I also didn't say the plan in like a particular order. I just said kind of what I was doing overall in the day. Okay. So this is not a particularly high damage run because we didn't really get, we only have, like, we have plus one cast, but we need more than that. Ah, I didn't mean to do a greater call. That's the thing about Clouded Judgment is I accidentally saved up things. Which we weapon is best for the first run? Like, for your first win? Because I shield of some variety or bow, maybe? 
It really just depends on your playstyle. They're all pretty viable at the beginning. I'm just explaining how to play Beowulf at some at like a, a high level. Got him. Great. So there we go. So that is my Bayo tutorial. Wasn't exactly the most super awesome Bayo run, but it was a good enough Bayo run to be able to demonstrate how the weapon works, right? Like, that was, I think that was a solid demonstration of what Bayo does, right? It wasn't a super, it wasn't a super uh, powerful Bayo run, which is fine. In fact, I think it's better that it wasn't a super powerful Bayo run because all it, what it really did is showed you what sort of an average Bayo run could slash should look like, right? Um, do you focus ads or Hades? You focus Hades. Uh, if you are in, if you have like, if you don't have all the like mirror stuff maxed out or if you're on low health, you can focus the ads to try and uh, clear them out and not die. Like I, I focus ads sometimes in um, when doing fresh file to credits because I don't have as many death defiances and things like that. So since I'm less safe on those runs, I'll kill the ads. But if you're playing like optimally, you want to just go after Hades. Okay. Anyway, so that's my that's my Beowulf demonstration with some explanation of how I choose targets and move through rooms. So, now that that's done, we're going to do Hera. You left gems? I don't need gems. That's the thing, tripping balls. Take a look at how many gems I have on my save file. This is a fully unlocked save file with 480,000 darkness and 13,158 gems and everything unlocked. So I, I, don't, I don't have to worry about it. I take darkness only because you have to to be able to leave the room. 